Splendid, marvellous, first rate, tally ho. Yes, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London normally telling you fascinating facts. But I'm in Turkey for the Turkish uh, International Tourism Film Festival, so I couldn't really put together a proper film <laughs> because I'm on holiday, all right? So this is a little bit of what I got, got up to, if you care to see my holiday video. See you around like a donut. My odyssey begins in Cappadocia, near a town called Nivshi here, just outside Kayser. <laughs> What's the name of our driver? Hi, Ahmed. Nice to meet you. Thanks for letting us come into your car and make a big mess. Cappadocia is famous for its breathtaking landscapes and we've got loads to cram in. But I'm staying on the edge of town in the middle of a melon field. So I better get my skates on and meet the others. Wow, yes. Like it's, uh, where is this? Where are we staying? Uh, in a cave. A cave? A cave. Well, then you should see my hotel. At least you got... It's Cappadocia Cave Resort. It's amazing. So what, you got to stay? This is outrageous. And we do have a pool. And when you wake up in the morning, if it's early enough at 7, you can see all the balloons. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm so jealous. They, you should see the one they put me in. Although we do have better kebabs, I bet. Do you want to check the room? Yes, please. Do you want to see my cave? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Shahrazad is beckoning me into her lair. Better you, than ever. Can you tell me a thousand and one stories, please? Okay, so... <laughs> DCR, the Cappadocia Cave Hotel, is that? Yes, the Cappadocia. This is outrageous. Wait a minute. What? I also have different light options, but it's day, so I don't know if we can explore those. And then this is the Check out this bathroom. wonderful bathroom. Is where you have the jacuzzi. What? And you have a walk -in. She's staying at an absolute Woo! palace. I mean, I like my place. It was excellent in terms of, uh, of food and and hospitality, but, um, but it wasn't a deluxe palace like this with that view. Known for the romanticism, mystery and magic. What does Cappadocia mean? The beautiful horses. The land of beautiful horses. So where are the horses at? Now, I see you've seen a couple of camels. It's even the policemen on horses. Yeah, you into that? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> that does it. I'm off to buy a policeman's uniform and find some transport with four legs. Hang on a minute. Not one of those. Are you enjoying it? <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Poor Camel, I feel a little bit sorry for him. Well, at least he's walking. I can't work out whether the flies are attracted to the Camel or they're attracted to me. But this is the way to travel. <laughs> so it's up to the castle to watch some award-winning films in a beautiful setting. But I can't stay long, as I have to be up at 4.30 to catch my flight. Excellent. I'm up pretty early to catch my flight, but it's on one of these things with these balloonatics over here. Oh, Took my eyebrows off that. Glad I wore my hat, otherwise I could have lost some of my hair. I mean, when they said that you have to stand in the basket. I didn't realise it was literally a wicker basket like my mum used to carry her fruit in. Are you okay, everybody? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Slightly Everyone else fly. Oh, you have seatbelts? Yes. Where are they? Yes, yeah. The only trouble is I'm so tall that if I stand up straight, <laughs> this is about waist height. Is if there's a sudden gust of wind, we might end up in Aleppo, which is only about 200 kilometers that way. We're now cruising at uh, 500 meters over Red Valley. Somewhere over there is what is rather pleasingly known as Penis Valley. But well, it is a my school anyway. Let's carry out some roof repair.
I think he's watching satellite TV. <laughs> This is a beautiful landing. He, he can land on a postage stamp, this guy. He's amazing. Uh, uh, I think uh, I will land on the trailer. Uh -huh. On the trailer? But I, I will try, I will try. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't, don't take position, don't take, don't take. Don't panic, don't panic. <laughs> I'm professional, don't worry. Bravo! Thank you very much for coming. My name is Umit, uh, I'm working in the Royal Balloon. We, we fly every day 40 balloons. 40 balloons, out. Yeah. but before COVID? Be, before COVID, every day 150 balloons, wow. every day. How do you learn to be a balloon pilot? <laughs> If you uh, if you want, you can learn in the Cappadocia. Let's go to uh, school. And uh, do you have an official title? Are you a balloonatic or something? Yeah. <laughs> Balloonomania. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank so what's the name of the company? Royal Balloon. Royal Balloon. Royal Balloon. The best pilot. You're yeah, the best pilot I'm, here? Yeah, best company, best pilot. It was, it was a wonderful experience. Um, how was it for you, Kat? Oh, spectacular. Did you spectacular. How did you enjoy uh, ballooning over Penis Valley? Oh, I mean, that was a sight to behold. <laughs> and before I had time for a cup of tea and digestive biscuit, we are off on a Jeep safari. In the world before Jules guides, primal chaos reigned. Heaven sought order, but the phoenix can fly only when its feathers are grown. The four worlds formed again and yet again, as endless eons wheeled and passed. Time and the natural essences of heaven and the moisture of the earth all worked upon a certain rock, old as creation. These rock formations were formed like 50 million years ago by the volcanic something to do with the volcanic ash that landed here. And I think something to do with the way that snow melts also formed some of these strange phallic shapes on the landscape. People know Cappadocia is only balloons, but uh, it's not balloons. You know, Cappadocia is such more than only balloons. There is really good underground cities. Christian people's ancestors escaped from slaughter and hide in these fairy chimneys and they live their religion here. So. So um, what, who's inside these things now? I mean, I see lots of windows and doors. I mean, are they all empty? Like, they are all empty. Some people who do investments uh, buy them and make their hotel, but they really doing respectfully. This is what, the Selfie Hotel? Yes, it's Selfie Hotel. It's a family business. The best place for a selfie, is it? Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes, it is. Wait, you've got a jacuzzi on the balcony? Yes. Is this not where the Turkish Olympic limbo team stayed when they, during the Olympics? <laughs> Just taking advantage of a rare moment of uh, peace amongst the mayhem and chaos that is our host, Shan, who is doing an excellent job that he's running around like a blue ass fly. And uh, every time, it's like being in the army, every time I'm, I'm, I'm about to drink my tea or something, he goes, okay, chop, chop, let's go. Anyway, so um, this is, uh, what do you make of the Turkish tea? You like it? It's, uh, it's quite good, this, actually. I mean, I must admit, these could do with a little handle, <laughs> in my opinion. Instead of being thermonuclear, we've got to have asbestos fingers and lips to drink this. But it's good. It's good. But you see, he's doing it again. My tea has literally... He suggested having the tea. As soon as the tea arrives, they're saying, let's go. I don't get it. <laughs> Every, everyone keeps doing that to me. <laughs> what uh, fun and games do you have planned for us now? What we have is first we are going to start with Kaimak, the underground city. Uh, An underground city? Indeed, indeed. Uh, these are quite marvelous structures and up until 1960s, early parts of 60s, we didn't know of their existence. So f even for us, it's something new. We have more than 50 underground cities that we know of in the region and we still keep finding new ones, you know. The one we are going to visit is uh, a structure which can house up to 30,000 people. Wow. These 
are a massive underground city built about 2,000 years ago by Christians hiding from the Romans. It feels just like going into an underground station. <laughs> the train departing from platform eight. Oh, wow. Oh, I shouldn't stray or I'll lose the group. See all these uh, holes in the ground? These were little traps for if an uh, unsuspecting Roman did manage to find his way in here. All the Christians would leave these traps for them. And uh, I don't know, Roman would fall down and break his leg or something. They could stab them through these holes in the wall with their knives. Sounds a bit gruesome, really. Hello? 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 That's where they'd stick the grapes. I guess you'd get your foot and you'd, you'd crush your grapes in there, you see, but they made the women do it. Because apparently, if a man did it, he'd, uh, they'd get hairy wine and vinegar and stuff. Except not in my case, I haven't got hairy feet. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm afflicted with bald ankles. I look like I'm wearing a little pair of hairy three quarter length trousers. But uh, the ventilation down here is actually pretty good, so it doesn't smell too bad. What, who's that? Hey. Oh no! no. What happens yeah. if... Uh oh, I've got to do a kind of three point turn in here. Oh, that's difficult. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, you've got to be athletic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. I don't know what they did about getting an IKEA delivery or something. If they needed a bed or something delivered. <laughs> you're all right, you're all right, Hugo. Sorry, I'm okay, thank you. And just through here is one of these incredibly heavy stone doors. That's similar to the one that I suppose Jesus Christ must have had on his tomb, because they talk about how the stone had been rolled away. And these were used to uh, trap Romans down here and weighed like, several tons. You're blocking my passage. I've got lots of nice shots of your bottom in my film. It's a fantastic view. Going through the mines of Moria. We made it. I feel like at the end of the Poseidon adventure, you know, when they... <laughs> We've arrived at our destination. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Hello, welcome, Julian. Oh. Hello. Very oh, nice. Tricky when you come to the doing the washing up, no? Yes. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to my friends at the festival, and I'm heading off to the west coast. Turkey's a lot bigger than I thought, so I'm flying, but not in a balloon. That's, who should I say, a really quite commercial beachfront holiday destination. It's not really my thing. So I'm gonna head off to the ancient city of Ephesus to see one of the wonders of the world. Ephesus was an ancient Greek city built in the 10th century BC and developed into a huge commercial centre after the Romans arrived in 129 BC. Bloody Romans, what did they ever do for us? It's amazing to think that people actually just lived here, including Saint John the Apostle and the Virgin Mary. And other people just walked along here, chatting to other people, picking their nose, tripping over, stubbing their toe on stuff. I often wondered what it would be like to attend a performance here. The word Odeon comes from the Greek for I sing and was the name for buildings used for performances. As a matter of fact, I used to tread the boards in my youth. Looks like they're getting ready for a performance tonight. I wonder what's on. Oh, reason not the need. Our basest beggars are in the poorest thing superfluous. I suppose they didn't do Shakespeare here. No, well, I don't know any Aristophanes. <laughs> Never mind. Perhaps I'll stick to filmmaking. Time for a quick visit to the brothel, I think. The House of Love, this way. No Jules Guide is complete without mention of prostitutes for some reason. But yes, the House of Love. Seen better days, I've got to say. Damn it. Locked. Damn it. Imagine the things that have gone on in here. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm standing outside one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. What's left of it? The wonders of the ancient world were a list of seven magnificent uh, constructions listed by a fellow called Antipater of Sidon. He says of this, 
I have set eyes on the wall of lofty Babylon, and the statue of Zeus, and the hanging gardens, and the colossus of the sun, and the huge labour of the high pyramids. But when I saw the house of Artemis, that mounted to the clouds, those other marvels lost their brilliancy. And I said, Lo, apart from Olympus, the sun never looked on aught so grand. It's a real Mackay. Wonderful. Overlooking this wonder of the world is what's left of the Basilica of St John the Apostle, built in the 6th century AD. St John was rather pleasingly the son of Zebedee, and it was here that he wrote his gospel. After the apostles were driven out of Jerusalem, Jesus entrusted his favourite disciple, they say, St John, to look after his mother. And so he brought her here to Ephesus. After St John died, aged 93, he was buried somewhere underneath all this. It looks like there's some stairs leading down to him too, and a little padlock on the gate. Amazing to think he's still under there. Having come all this way, I couldn't very well miss out the house of the Virgin Mary. As it turns out, it's her supposed house, based on a best guess relating to a second-hand report of a vision had by a German nun 1800 years after the fact. That's good enough for me. I mean, I suppose the reason she's all the way up here is because she was hiding away. So otherwise, it must have been quite tricky to get your groceries every day. Well, they've turned it into a church now anyway, so uh, it doesn't look how it would have looked when she was here. But they are not allowed to take any pictures inside anyway. So that's that. Well, time waits for no man, and it's time to head up the coast to Chinacale and the ancient city of Troy. I have come up the coast from Izmir to Chinacale. Quite good fun saying that, Chinacale, which is very close to the ancient city of Troy, hence the horse. That's the one they used in the 2004 film, and Brad Pitt crawled out of that very horse's backside. <laughs> This is the Hellespont, the Dardanelles in uh, Greek. I think it's called Dardanelia or something. But that's where Lord Byron swam across when he did his grand tour in 1810 and met lots of 13-year-old boys, which he fell in love with and ultimately wrote poetry about. He came over here and he swam across. Funny old fellow. That's when he became really famous after publishing Child Harold's Pilgrimage, his famous poem that no one seems to have read. <laughs> So let me get this straight. Paris was a bloke from Troy. No, 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 no. Helen, the wife of Menelaus, king of Sparta, was the most beautiful woman in the world. And she was made to fall in love by the goddess Aphrodite with Paris, who took her back with him to Troy, the cad. But Menelaus's brother, Agamemnon, the king of the Mycenae, was well peeved and led an expedition to besiege Troy in a war which lasted 10 years, during which many heroes died, like Hector and Achilles. Eventually, the Greeks sailed off into the distance, leaving behind them a wooden horse as a sort of gift. So the Trojans thought, yeah, nice, thanks for that gift. And they wheeled the horse into their city, all had a big party. And uh, whilst they were all in their drunken stupor, the soldiers climbed out of the horse and duffed them up. That's the grave of Achilles. Oh, I'm not going to go up there. They were real people, Paris and Achilles. I mean, whether he was really shot by an arrow into his ankle, we don't know. But Homer, who wrote the Odyssey, just heard all these stories by word of mouth. And he was only writing about 500 years after the Trojan War took place, because the Trojan War was about 1200 BC. So I don't know if there was really a big horse, but it must have been based on something. Who knows, or dares to dream. But that's where most of the battle took place, is the, the battlefield just over there. So this is where the entrance was to the city, where they built this wall as a kind of corridor leading up to the entrance. So that if people attacked, then they'd have to be funneled through into this little corridor, so then they would be easier to attack. And then also, they've got a little corner here, so that people with their battering rams couldn't take a big run up. They'd have to run around a corner in order to get to the gate, which is right here. Cunning, anyway. All comes to naught if uh, you're going to fall for the old wooden horse trick, frankly, which they actually delivered at the other entrance where there isn't a little corner. And then the Greeks jumped out and killed them all when they were drunk. It's hardly cricket, is it? When I was a young man, I carried me pack and I lived the free life of the road. I do love boats. I'm so glad I decided to take the trip to Gallipoli after all. And I believe it was all Churchill's fault, actually. I think he decided it would be a good idea to attack here, down this narrow strait. I mean, they came safely up here. 
It seems like such a crazy idea. Then in 1915, my country said, son, it's time you stop rambling, there's work to be done. This is the place, uh, 25th of April, 1915, uh, at 4.30, like in the morning. The first Ansex, uh, exactly, they came ashore, uh, all under the Turkish fire. They move up, all the way up the top, to capture the first place. Must have been terrifying, coming up this beach. I'm trying to capture the high ground up there. And who so, stopped them? Uh, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Nearly blew us back home to Australia. But it's amazing. I mean, the Turkish front line was just over there. The Hansak front line was just over here. And that tunnel's obviously one of these tunnels where they were digging to try and get underneath the enemy in order to plant a bomb or something underneath them. And the band played waltzing Matilda as we stopped to bury our slain. And we buried ours and the Turks buried theirs. Then we started all over again. So this is Chunuk Bay out here where most of the New Zealand troops lost their lives. They were waiting for reinforcements from, I think, the Brits who were down there at Suvla Bay. Well, the reinforcements didn't arrive and uh, they just couldn't hold this high ground and got turfed out by Ataturk, who went on to found Turkey. Or I'll go no more waltzing Matilda All around the green bush far and free To hunt and to pace a man need both legs No more waltzing Matilda I've reached Istanbul and I'm almost at the end of my little odyssey. Um, I'm not sure how much more filming I'm going to do though because I've had a bit of trouble with my tummy. A touch of the old Ataturk's revenge, I think. Oh, so many hills and steps and alleyways. This definitely isn't a town for bicycles. Since I'm feeling poorly, I decide to spoil myself with a bit of decadence. If they let me in dressed like this, that is. Well, this is my usual style. This is the Pera Palace Hotel, built in 1892, supposedly for passengers of the Orient Express, which, which finished, ended its journey here in Istanbul. And this is apparently where Agatha Christie wrote Murder on the Orient Express. They've still got her room here. And uh, it was the first building in the whole of Turkey, apart from the palaces, to have electricity throughout. I don't quite feel appropriately dressed, but sometimes you just feel like a piece of cake how can you resist a cake with a blueberry on it? I'm just off to have my final dinner in Istanbul. Epek. Hello. 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 Where are you taking me to? <laughs> I'm taking to you a nice restaurant in Istanbul. It has a nice view, Bosphorus view. Let's go, Julian. Oh, where, Welcome. Where? This is your equivalent of a late night to Actually, for yeah, us. when we drink too much alcohol, hmm. we mostly prefer to eat mussels. Yeah. Over there, you can see people are. <laughs> Yeah, this is getting chaotic. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful moment. That's a beautiful moment. We're right behind us. We're already on Istiklal Street. Okay. Okay, this is the most famous street in Istanbul. This is quite touristic, and there are millions of the restaurants. And the place is a kind of a Greek restaurant. Oh. I know that you're in Istanbul, but. That's okay. I'm cool. Okay. We're friends with the Greeks. Let's go after from here. you. Okay. Come here. <laughs> I mean, I've just been spent about an hour and a half eating the starters and they kept on bringing out more stuff and now they've brought the main course. It's too big. Okay. Just plunk it right in the middle. This is just okay. The... I left it. Okay. Perfect. Sherefe, 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 sherefe everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry this hasn't been a normal video, but I'm on holiday, okay? So, uh, so anyway, look, I hope to see you soon. I shall uh, hopefully create a new Instagram account as well soon. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I hope you're all going to be wonderful to yourselves. And I'll see you next time, probably for a video about London. See you later. Cheers. <laughs> I'm getting on with my beer now.